At Sorry. that time, just on the cross, mm -hmm. as I understand also, <coughs> unlike with other traditions at that time, nor were legs of the person who was normally on the, on the cross were actually broken at that time. That didn't happen, and the biblical references prove that. And then also, uh, when Hazrat Isa Jesus Christ was removed from the cross, he was then handed to his own family, his own friends, to sort of take the body away. That's right. The, the, the body was then, <coughs> then handed over and it was taken to the sepulcher, um, which, which is, uh, if, if you look at the history of uh, that, that region, these are very large tombs, and they are very airy tombs, so therefore people can go in and come out. It is not a small tomb like we have a concept of today. These are large cave-type rooms uh, where people were able to come in. And, and the, the events that followed on from there are, are interesting as well because we know that the, the body was tended to by his disciples. They did not just uh, put, wrap him up in a shroud and, and, and leave him at that. He, he was, uh, his, his wounds, they had uh, an ointment that was put over, over those wounds. Mm -hmm. Now th this is not an embalming ointment, that is the thing too. It was a medicinal ointment which had healing powers. Why would you want to put medicinal ointment on someone that had died? Mm -hmm. So this, this is important that uh, this, this ointment was used, not an embalming ointment. 100 pounds of it, huh? 100 pounds of it. Not, not, a, small not a small amount. Not a small amount. And that, that was actually, the Isa al-Islam, Jesus Christ, was taken into the tomb. He has this ointment. Uh, and then, you know, according to Christian beliefs, I think we've already demonstrated through the biblical references that Jesus could not have died on the cross, indeed did not die on the cross. And then we see Jesus reappear, which was taken as the resurrection. Yet, Hazrat Sahib, how Hazrat Isa al-Islam, Jesus Christ, reappeared is also worth sort of just dwelling on briefly as well, how he reappeared to his disciples. Yes, yes. I mean, this is the next interesting fact, as uh, Dr. Saab was talking about. What happens next? What is the use of a body if the whole purpose of him being man or son of man was just to separate his spirit from that body, leave the body behind, and then reappear. Reappear to ensure his disciples something they should have already known. As I said about Judas Iscariot, he should have known the purpose of this man's mission was to give his life for our salvation, to atone our sins. But he didn't believe it because he killed himself. What happened next shows his disciples also didn't believe it. Because the moment they heard that the master was seen alive, they began to doubt. They doubted so much that one of the, the disciples is known even now as Doubting Thomas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's know? where that originates. That's where yes. it originates from. Mm -hmm. Because when he was told by Mary, who had gone to the, the tomb and found that the master's not there, and he met someone in disguise, who later on we, we learned was Jesus himself in disguise, why he disguised himself as a spirit, nothing to fear now. They can't arrest a spirit and put him on the cross, and if they do, he just floats away or whatever it is. But he's disguised, and he tells her that, oh, Mary, why do you seek the, the, the dead amongst the living? Now go tell your disciples that your master's alive, and he's going to come meet you very shortly. She runs off, excited, and my God, uh, I got good news. The master's not there. His body's gone. He's been given new life. He rushes to see the disciples tells them the news, they should be saying, hallelujah, thank the Lord, we're all going to be saved, let's go believe in Jesus. They said, no, this can't happen. Yes. <laughs> Where's the body, yeah, Mary? What do you do with the body? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Some, something's going on here. Yeah. Not to trivialize the matter at all, but the reactions, the human reactions of a group of inner circle disciples should have been markedly different. They should have been embracing the fact that, yes, the master told us all this, we watched the events unfold, although many of us ran from the scene, but a few who were there who gave the accounts, and this last one disciple, Mary, who tells them uh, he's alive, they don't believe her. Isn't that amazing? Finally, he does appear to them, and doubting Thomas wants to get close to the master to see, is this the same Jesus Christ that I knew? After this ordeal, as Dr. Saab has explained, would you not be a, a bit uh, drawn and, and, and wearied by the whole event of being beaten, being forced to drag that cross, spending some time in a state of crucifixion, 
finally taken down, wrapped up with medicinal mm -hmm. ointments around you, put inside a, 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 a sepulchral, sepulchral, a little tomb for a while, basically, and uh, you can say a, a barometric chamber in the hospital, you know, to, to, to heal, as we would At understand it. But at least yeah. you're going through all this recovery. You come out a bit disheveled, a bit uh, drawn, and people look at you, and you look somewhat similar but different than the person you just met, and you want to know, are you a spirit or are you a man? What does Thomas do? He reaches out to touch his master, and the master said, yes, I am the same flesh and blood that you knew before. Touch me, Thomas. See my wounds. So you'll have faith, and Thomas does this. The next thing he does, again, is very strange for spirit. Christ has left the body behind now. There's no need for this body. Hmm. He's a resurrected spirit. But he asked them, oh, my, my disciples, do you have anything to eat? He feels <laughs> hunger. He yeah. feels hunger. Mm -hmm. And they give him some fish and honeycomb. So this, again, shows the events after crucifixion disprove the fact that Christ died on that cross and a spirit is now is amongst them. This is the same man who escapes this in a very miraculous way, no doubt. Uh, God supported him to get through this, no doubt. But it's the same man who disguises himself, reunites with his disciples, and is asking for food so he can continue the healing and move on toward the rest of his mission, which is to connect with the lost sheep of Israel. And that, Jangir Saab, if we could move to that, we've established, I think, quite clearly that from the disguise, not just the reaction of the disciples, but the reaction and the way Hazrat Isa Jesus Christ was be behaving himself in disguise. But then his mission was the 12 tr lost tribes of Israel. As you said earlier, two tribes were already in Palestine, Israel at that time, but then beyond. What was his mission? What happened next? Well, first we have to say what had happened to them. Why are they called lost tribes? It's because 2,700 years ago, uh, about 700 years before Christ, the Assyrians had uh, attacked the kingdom of Israel, which is the northern kingdom in the Holy Land, and had carried off 10 of the tribes, apart from Benjamin and Judah, into captivity. And they had spread them out over their dominion, which extended well into Persia, modern-day Persia, and even a little beyond that. So over the centuries, the tribes actually settled those areas and uh, arrived even into India and some even into, into the, 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 the beginnings of China. And they settled there and they never returned. And uh, they continued to follow the, the religion of Moses. Some of them later became Buddhists. Many of them became Hindus in Kashmir, for example, in India. And I'd like to tell you, I myself descend from one of those tribes and I'll say it in the language of Jesus, Anna, Ani Meshevet Yosef, I'm from the tribe of Joseph, myself. And we know our history, mm -hmm. and we know that Jesus came to us. Mm -hmm. I'm from Afghanistan originally. He came to Afghanistan, he preached to us, we believed in him, he is the Messiah, we accepted him. Then he went on to Kashmir, and he preached there, and he would come and go between us and the Kashmiris, and eventually he passed away in Kashmir. So Jesus, Christ, I mean in the last sort of 10 minutes of the program, if we could just focus on his mission now. We hear the historic traditions of a, uh, person in the personage of Yus Asaf, the gatherer, as yes. a, uh, um, that appeared in Kashmir in the northern parts of Afghanistan, etc. Could you put that into perspective in terms of the historical Jesus that we have talked about? Well, the historical Jesus was a prophet. He was a prophet of God and he had to, to uh, preach to all the tribes. He said to his disciples, and this is in the Bible, he said, I have other sheep who are not of this flock and they must hear my voice so that there is only one shepherd and one flock. And I, he said that in different, uh, at different times, and it's been, it's been recorded. He did go there. Now the interesting thing is that not only there are oral traditions which speak of him coming to Kashmir and to Afghanistan and other areas as well, but we find there are documents which exist among non-Semitic uh, uh, peoples as well who have nothing to do with Christ. For example, the Buddhist in Tibet who mentioned the coming of Christ. But there's a very interesting document which, which belongs to the Hindus. It's a historical document which is the Bhavishya Mahapuran. And this is uh, the annals of the kings of India of the past. 